Hello everyone, myself Shweta Shah. I am your instructor for the subject Computer Organization and Architecture. In this subject, we have started Unit 2, that is Basic Computer Organization and Design. And in this unit, we are going to see today the topic that is Memory Reference Instruction. So before starting with the topic, let me revise the instruction cycle. In the instruction cycle, you are going to complete in four tasks, that is fetching of the instruction, then decoding the instruction, then calculating the effective address or fetching the operand from actual address and fourth thing is the execution of instruction okay so from this fetching and decoding of the instruction will be same for all type for all of the types of the instruction and this task is going to be completed over this timing signal t0 t1 and t2 at T0 timing, you will uh, access the content of program counter into address register so that you can find, uh, you can access the location where your instruction is. Then you will store the content of memory location that is given by the AR register to, to the IR register that is your instruction and we increment the program counter by 1 so that your fetching of the instruction is done. After fetching you will decode the instruction and for decoding you have to check the IR bits of uh, IR bits. 12 to 14 of the instruction register that gives you the operation code from D0 to D7. Then you have to uh, store this address register uh, with the content of IR0 to 11 and then you have to store this 15th bit to the I flag or I flip flop. Okay. After that this fetching and decoding is completed you have to find out whether what instruction which instruction is this and according to that your task is going to be complete so your whenever you are uh, talking about the memory reference instruction that means you have already fetched the instruction and decode the instruction that means you have completed task of t0 t1 and t2 timing signal and now we are going to uh, completing the task from t3 timing signal onwards okay so let me see what are the memory reference instruction? When the memory reference instruction is decoded, D7 bit is set to 0. That means you have some time uh, control signals from D0 to D6. Okay. So here uh, we can have i bit as a 0 or 1. Your 12 to 14 bit can be 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 0 and you have some address bit. Okay. Uh, this uh, table shows you the uh, memory reference instruction we have total seven uh, memory reference instruction and depending upon the seven instruction you have some control like d0 or d1 d2 or d3 if your n instruction is there then your control is d0 if your n instruction is there then your control is d1 for every instruction your control is d2 and so for this n instruction you are going to complete the task of ending of Accumulators contain and the content of the memory location given by the AR system. Okay. For addition, you are adding the memory locations contain that you have stored in the AR register and the accumulator. Okay. For loading or you can say LDA instruction, you are storing the location contain MAR to the accumulator. For ST instruction, you are storing the content of accumulator to the memory location AR. For BUN instruction, you are changing the sequence of the program and for changing the sequence of the program, you have to update the program counter and for that your control signal will be like T4. For BSA, your control signal will be like D5 and for ISA, your control signal will be like D6. For So that you can by forget that which instruction you are going to execute from this memory reference instruction. Okay. Uh, so let me see further the effective address of the instruction is in the address register of AR and the, it was placed during the timing signal T2 when I is 0 or during the timing signal T3 when I is 1. If you have used the indirect addressing then this uh, AR register will have address at T3 timing signal and if your addressing mode is a direct addressing mode then your AR register will contain the address at T2 timing signal. Okay. Uh, the execution of the memory reference instruction start from the timing signal T4. Okay. So let me see uh, one by one each one of these instructions. That first one is the AMD instruction. 
in this AMP instruction, this perform uh, the ending logical operation of the pair of the bits of the accumulator and the memory word that is specified by the effective address field. And the result of this operation is transferred into accumulator so that we can represent it like condition for this uh, AMP instruction your control signal is D0 and your timing signal is T4 so that your condition will be D0 T4 okay starting for the execution okay and for this ending operation your content is stored in the memory location you can't directly do the ending operation between some memory locations contained and accumulated first you have to bring that data into the data register or you can say data register so at the timing signal t4 if your operation is of d0 that means your control is of d0 that means you have to perform the operation of ending so for that at t4 timing signal first your content of the memory location given by the AR resistor is bring into the DR resistor and after that the ending operation between the DR resistor and accumulators content is going to be performed at T5 timing signal so that for your uh, this condition will be D0 T5 at this time ending operation is done and after the ending operation completed your sequence counter must be uh, bring to 0 so that your sequence counter is clear. So by this way you can represent your end instruction and this two tasks are completed or you can say two timing signals are required. First timing signal is for storing the content into DR resistor and second timing signal is for ending operation. For example if we consider the instruction AMD 500 in this instruction the content of 500 memory location is ended with the accumulator and stored into accumulator. So by this way you can use this end instruction. Second one is the add to the accumulator. In this instruction, the content of accumulator is added into the memory locations content and result is stored into the accumulator. And here also, the if carry is generated, then uh, that is going to be stored into E fly. And uh, here also we require to transfer the content of memory location to DR resistor first so that at T4 timing signal your condition will be like D1 timing, D1, D1 control signal is generated and T4 timing signal is there. Then at that time you have to store the content of AR resistor memory location given by the AR resistor to the DR resistor and then at T5 timing signal you will do the addition operation if it any carry is generated then it is going to be stored into E fly okay you can represent it like this and after end of this you have to clear the sequence counter okay so this way you can use this end instruction uh, then if we uh, think about the LDA instruction then this instruction is used to load the content into accumulator okay and uh, this instruction transfer the memory word specified by the effective address to the accumulator and for that you have to require to store this first this content into DR resistor and then you can transfer it into the uh, accumulator okay so for D to T4 timing signal the memory locations contain AR is going to be stored into DR resistor and at D to T5 timing signal this DR resistor is stored into accumulator Okay, so by this way you can store the content into accumulator. Uh, next one is the ST instruction. In this instruction stores the content of accumulator into memory word specified by this effective address field and for that you require the control signal D3 and timing signal T4 and that can, if this condition is fulfilled then your accumulator's content is going to be stored into memory location given by this AR resistor and sequence counter is clear at the end of this task okay uh, next we can use this instruction like DUM that is branch unconditionally in this instruction this transfer the program to the instruction specified by the effective address this B1 instruction allows the programmer to specify an instruction out of the sequence and program branches or you can say jump instruction unconditionally uh, for this uh, at the T4 timing signal you have to check for the D4 control signal if that this condition is fulfilled that is D4 T4 condition is fulfilled then your content of address resistor that you have provided the ad effective address that is going to be stored into program counter so that your sequence of execution is changed 
okay and uh, your next instruction is loaded or executed from the new program counter and after end of the sequence uh, this operation you have to clear the sequence counter for example if we consider the du and 500 so that your next program counter will be 500 that is your effective address field is 500 Next, we can use this BSA instruction that is branch and save written address. This is also a branching instruction, but in this instruction, we are storing this written address. In BUN, we are not storing any written address, but in BSA, we are going to storing this written address. Uh, this instruction is useful for branching to a portion of the program called as a subroutine or procedure. When it is executed, the BSA instruction stores the address of the next instruction to the sequence into the memory location specified by the effective address and from next to next address uh, your execution is completed. So that uh, here the task will be like this, program counter is first stored at the memory location given by this address register and then the program counter is incremented by 1. That means your address register contain is incremented by 1 and that is ultimately stored into program counter. For example, if we consider the instruction like BSA 135 that you have stored at location 20. Okay, so after fetching this instruction, your contain of program counter will be 21 because you have already fetched the instruction. Your next instruction is stored at location 21. So your PC will be 21. After uh, this fetching this instruction, when it is executing this instruction, it will first store the written address that is 21 to the location that is given by this instruction that is BSA 135. So then this 21 address is for stored at location 135 and after that location that is 136 onwards you have stored your subroutine and then you will execute your subroutine. At the end of subroutine you have used one instruction that is BUN 135 with I bit 1 that is your indirect address. Okay, so that at the end of this subroutine you will go to the location 135 for branching where you have stored your actual address from where you have to execute. So that you have used some indirect addressing over here. We can represent it like this. Your 21 is first going to be stored at memory location 135 and then your program counter is incremented by 1 so that you can execute your subroutine. Okay, so by this way you can use this BSA instruction. Uh, for this, uh, to use this memory and the uh, bus properly, the BSA instruction must execute with sequence of the this two micro operation like at D5 P4 timing signal. First program counter is going to be stored at memory location given by this AR resistor and then AR resistor's contain is incremented by 1 and then storing this AR into program counter and clearing the sequence counter to 0 so that you can start your next instruction. Okay. In last Thing, we have represent both of these things into one step but actually to perform this operation you will require two timing signal because you can't directly increment the container of PC. You have to first increment the container of AR resistor and then store it into a PC. Okay? So by this way we can use this BSA instruction. Next one is the increment and skip if zero instruction. This instruction increment the word specified by the effective address and if this incremented value is equal to zero, the PC is incremented by one. That means your next instruction is skipped, is not executed and directly next to next instruction is executed. Since it is not possible to increment the word inside the memory, it is necessary to read the word into data register and increment the content of data register and then store back it into the memory. So your operation will be like at fourth timing signal, your condition will be P6. And fourth timing signal, you will store the locations, uh, memory location ARs contain into DR resistor. Then you will increment this content by one, and then at T6 timing signal, you will uh, store this contain into memory location next time so that you have incremented the locations contain. But actually for this task you have to bring this data into DR register then increment and then store. Okay. After that storing you have to check whether the DR register's contain is 0 or not. If it is 0 then you have to skip the next instruction that means you have to increment the program counter by 1 and SC 0 so that you can execute the next instruction. Otherwise 
uh, this task is not completed. Otherwise, the program counter is not incremented by one. So, uh, for example, if we consider the instruction like ISL 200, and if we have stored the 200 location with content 4, that means you have stored the 200 location with 4, or you can say minus 4. Let me consider with the minus 4. If you have stored the content minus 4 at the 200 location, then first you have to uh, minus 4 is bring into DR resistor, then incremented by 1. That means it will be minus 3. Then it is stored into uh, mem that memory location second time. So that your content of that memory location is now minus 3. But this is not 0. Okay, this is also stored in DR resistor and this is not 0. So that your program counter is not incremented but next instruction is executed okay so by this way you can use this uh, increment and skip it zero instruction we can summarize this all of this instruction in this flow chart if your end instruction is there then you will require d0 if add instruction is there then you will require t1 if your LA instruction is there then you will require this d2 condition if st instruction is there then you will require d3 condition or you can say sorry uh, if it is DUN instruction then you will require D5 if it is BSA you will require D5 if it is ISF then you will require D6 control signal and for different different instruction you will require different different timing signal for uh, AMD instruction you will require two timing signal first is for storing data into data resistor and second timing signal is for ending operation similarly for add and LDA instruction for SPA, you will require only one timing signal and that condition will be D3, T4. For B1, also you will require only one timing signal, T4 and that uh, your AR resistors contain is stored into PC so that your sequence of execution is changed. For BSA, you will require two timing signal. First one is for storing the program counter into accumulate uh, AR address resistors contain uh, location and second one is to increment the contain address location by one and second one is for uh, storing this address, incremented address resistors contained into program counter and for ISR you will require three timing signal first one is for storing the content of AR resistor into data resistor then increment the content of data resistor and third thing is for storing the content into the memory location second time and check for the DR resistors content if it is zero then skip next instruction by incrementing PC by one Okay, so by this way we can use this memory reference instruction. So here we are ending our today's session. If you have any query then you can contact me.